anyone else feels like a new type 1 diabetes cure is announced pretty much every month now? In just the past three months, Verdex Pharmaceuticals announced that 11 out of 12 patients in a clinical trial either reduced or completely eliminated insulin injections. Sana Biotechnology claimed success in making transplanted, insulin-producing cells survive in patients without immune-suppressing drugs. And researchers in China reprogrammed a person's fat cells to produce insulin, making a woman living with type 1 diabetes insulin independent. That sounds promising. So are we getting closer to a real cure for insulin dependent diabetes? Having lived with type 1 diabetes since 1997, this is really exciting to me. However, I've also been promised that a cure is just five years out for the last 28 years, so I'm a little skeptical. So I decided to do a deep dive. So in this video, I'll cover the latest news on these potential cures. We'll talk a little bit about how they work and also some of the side effects and downsides. At the end of this video, I'll give you my perspective on a time frame for when we'll have a cure for type 1 diabetes, as well as what will that look like. Let's look at the first study from Vertex Pharmaceutical. The potential cure that's the furthest along in clinical trials is the Vertex Pharmaceutical's Cisly cell, formerly known as the VX-880. It's currently in phase 2 clinical trials with 12 patients, and they are actively enrolling another 50 patients for phase 3 trials in 2025. What Vertex is doing is that they're creating insulin-producing beta cells in their lab and then transplanting them into the liver of people living with type 1 diabetes. So far, all of the patients who received a full dose of the beta cells have shown positive results after 90 days. They have all started producing insulin, they have reduced their A1Cs, and 11 out of 12 have been able to reduce the amount of injected insulin that they need to manage their blood sugars. Four patients who received the full dose plus a follow-up dose a year later are now completely insulin independent, meaning that they are functionally cured of type 1 diabetes. This sounds amazing, but the cure comes with a significant downside. Because the transplanted beta cells are foreign to your body, you have to be on immune suppressing drugs for the rest of your life. These drugs have very serious side effects and they make you more vulnerable to disease and infections. So you generally only take them if you have no other choice, such as after an organ transplant. For now, this diabetes cure is mainly targeted at people who live with very hard to manage diabetes and are hyperglycemic unaware, meaning that they cannot feel their low blood sugars. For me, I would prefer to have diabetes over having to take immune suppressing drugs, but that's me, your choice might be different. Vertex is also working on another solution where they're encapsulating the beta cells in a protective device, guarding it against the immune system. But this is still an early phase one clinical trials. And these things can move super quickly. Right after I finished this video, Vertex announced that unfortunately this other solution had failed to produce any significant results. So they've ended this trial. It's a bummer. However, the VX880 is still going strong. Now let's look at the second study from Sena Biotechnology. Sena Biotechnology at the Uppsala University in Sweden is working on transplanting insulin producing cells without the use of immune suppressing drugs. They take insulin producing islet cells from organ donors and use gene editing techniques to modify them to hide them from the patient's immune system. Fascinating stuff. The cells are then injected into the patient where they start producing insulin. So far, only one patient have received an injection and only a small dose with the goal of seeing if the beta cells could survive and produce insulin. The dose was too small to make the patient insulin independent, but Sana used MRI scans as well as C-peptide tests to show that the beta cells were alive and producing small amounts of insulin after 12 weeks. This is a record for beta cells transplanted to a patient with type 1 diabetes who is not taking immune suppressant drugs. The next step is to use the same technique on lab-grown stem cells so they don't have to rely on organ donors. There will never be enough organ donors to supply enough stem cells for all of us living with type 1 diabetes, so it's really important that they figure out how to do this in a lab. So far they demonstrated how to do this with mice. The cells have stayed alive and produced insulin for 64 weeks. If they can create lab-grown cells that can survive in a human without immune-suppressing drugs, the plan is to start clinical trials for a real cure for humans in 2026. And now let's look at the third and last study that I'll be talking about in this video. 
A year ago, Chinese researchers announced that a woman with type 1 diabetes had become completely insulin independent after a stem cell treatment. What makes this study so exciting and I think why it was all over the news last year is that the patient, in theory, shouldn't need immune suppressing drugs. We don't know if that's actually true yet, but I'll get back to that a little later in this video. The reason why this treatment can be done without immune suppressing drugs is that they take the stem cells directly from the patient rather than from a donor. That means that the patient's body doesn't try to reject the cells. Here's how they do that. They start out by extracting fat cells from the patient in a very simple procedure. They then convert these fat cells into something called pluripotent stem cells in a lab. This is a type of stem cell that can develop into many other types of cells. These stem cells are then guided to become insulin producing islet cells, similar to the ones you naturally have if you do not live with type 1 diabetes. Instead of implanting the insulin producing cells into the pancreas where they would naturally be located, they're implanted into the patient's stomach. This effectively creates a mini organ in the stomach that produces insulin. So far, only one patient has received this treatment and she became completely insulin independent after a year, which means that she was effectively cured of type 1 diabetes. This is really exciting, but there's a few different reasons why we can't get overly excited about a widely available cure just yet. First of all, we need to have this replicated in a large scale clinical study to see if this process works for everyone. Also, the first patient was cured and made the global headlines a year ago, and we haven't gotten any updates since then, so we don't quite know what's going on. The results from two other patients who received the same treatment was expected at the beginning of 2025, but so far nothing has been published. Another reason to be a little skeptical is that the first patient who was cured had received two liver transplants as well as a pancreas transplant before the stem cell treatment. This means that she was already on immune suppressing drugs for these organ transplants. So when the study claims that this type of stem cell treatment does not require immune suppressing drugs, we don't really know that that is true since the patient was already taking them. And here's my two cents on whether or not I think we'll have a cure for type 1 diabetes in the near future. Unfortunately, I don't think a real widely available cure is right around the corner. The new studies and results are super exciting and I think we're moving towards a cure, but it seems like there's still a lot of problems that they need to iron out. One of the biggest hurdles seems to be that all of these cures are based on transplanting stem cells. Even if they work perfectly and you wouldn't have to take immune suppressing drugs, you still have to go to the hospital multiple times for treatments and it most likely would be really expensive. A cure like that would only be available to a very small percentage of the world population with type 1 diabetes who could either afford it or have very good health care. Realistically, I think the first cure that we're going to see is going to be the one from Vertex or something similar. It will most likely still require immune suppressing drugs and it'll most likely only be for those who have diabetes that is extremely hard to manage or who are hypohypoglycemic unaware. But I do think that that will be available within the next few years, maybe five years. A real cure where we don't have to take immune suppressing drugs will probably take longer than that. But we don't know. Scientists and companies are working on a cure in a lot of other places than I mentioned in this video, and there might suddenly be a big breakthrough. I think as soon as we see the first big breakthrough, things are going to move very rapidly. I still hope for a cure in the next 10 to 15 years. Fingers crossed. This is my first video talking about diabetes cures and diabetes research. If this is something you'd like to see more of, please like this video, leave me a comment down below the video, let me know what you want to know more about. You can also join the conversation in my YouTube membership group. You can find that here on my YouTube page. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to my channel? Remember to turn on notifications, that way you'll never miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.